breathe was that one was just really deep even um it was about a mom who struggles with anxiety which i did and when i had my first my first child my son um i just didn't understand motherhood like it's just all too too much it's overwhelming and you go through so many stages that you just feel like you're the worst mother but then you are trying your best and that was just what i wrote about and i kind of think i i use it as like as therapy welcome back to the film goals podcast today i'm with the one and only lizette hunter <laughs> she is uh an actress producer writer and i met her when she was a makeup artist um so we'll talk about that but thank you for coming on thank welcome. you for having me i appreciate it yeah Hi. um so when i met you uh at first you were like a makeup artist but before that let's just like start at the beginning like what was the motivation for you to get into film or filmmaking i'm i always wanted to be an actress that's my dream was to be an actress when i was growing up i only had that dream then i went to film school in san francisco i started in film school at the community college of southern nevada but back in the day what was it can we, um, well, that was it. It was CSN. And, yeah. and then it's CSN now. But mm -hmm. um, I went there, took some classes, and then I went to San Francisco to the Academy of Art University. And um, what I noticed is I needed to get on set. So I, w I would always like advertise myself as a makeup artist or I could do hair, you know, stuff like that. And it got me on set. And then that's where I started networking. I did a couple acting things with like some of my friends. I was like behind the camera for their projects, for the student projects. And then when I moved back over here with my husband, um, I wasn't getting anything, so nobody knew me. So I had to network again out here. And then that's why with you, you know, I, I did that. I was like, well, I, I do special effects makeup, you know, if you ever need somebody, just anything to get me on set and to network and move forward. And then later on, I could tell them what I really wanted to do, <laughs> which is acting. So like when you went to school, what was your major? Um, I didn't, I didn't have a, I think I went for, was going for editing. Oh, I, really? I would switch it up because I remember when I took my first editing class, I really enjoyed it. Like I was just zoned out, it was like three hours would pass and I was like, oh my goodness. Like, that was amazing. You were just there just editing and in another world. And that was fun to me. Um, I did take special effects makeup classes. Uh, and then I also I think it was editing. I don't think anything else grabbed my attention. But I didn't finish in, at the Academy of Art University. So, so you so, didn't graduate? No, oh, I didn't so graduate. So you didn't have to pick anything. <laughs> so I didn't pick anything. I just actually took a bunch of courses, which helped me. Yeah. Because I noticed you do use them when you're on set, when, where you have to get the experience. Because I took a producing class, I took a a store a storyboarding class, you know, stuff like that, and and it really did help. That's cool. So then um, you come back to Vegas, um, you start doing these mixers to meet people, and then um, were you doing a bunch of like makeup gigs? Or? A couple. I mean, I I got a couple that were paid gigs, but not too many. A lot of them like on short film projects uh, that I would do and, you know, no pay. And it was okay because I was networking and I was getting to know people. So, I mean, and I have another job, so, so it didn't really bother me that mm. I wasn't getting paid anything. So to me, that wasn't important. It's was about making the connections. So um, do you remember your first role after, like, doing makeup? After doing makeup? Hmm... I don't know. I would. I want to say it would kind of be either. I don't know if I did something with you, mm -hmm. or I was with Hassani with for Takeout Girl. I feel. I feel maybe that was your first one. You think? I don't remember. So we honestly. did. I remember. Uh, so you did makeup for me when we first met. Um, you did special effects makeup for my short film, uh, Mirage. Mm -hmm. And then after that, yeah, you're like, oh, I, I want to act too. Just, just let me know. And then right. I think I brought you on for Sharon. Um, right. For Bryle's film. I think I had something before then, which was like a small wrong role that, that was called Addict. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it was a short film, too. 
And um, Marsha was a director. I don't remember her last name. But I think that was probably something that I did before Sharon. Because Sharon was kind of like a background. Yeah, it was just like an extra. Yeah. But you like, and you also did your own makeup, which was cool. And I was like, oh, oh yeah, I forgot I did that. Got, oh, we were like, oh, it's going to be a woman that's, you know, beat up by this guy. And I had to do a black <laughs> guy. It was my first time doing a black guy. It looked good, too. And, and most of the time with with um special effects makeup and all the makeup gigs I, I, I did a lot. I didn't know what I was doing. I was just, you know, yeah, I could do that. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to look it on YouTube. And then I did. And I figured it out. Yeah. And that's what I did. I looked on YouTube for a black guy. And what's funny is, like, I didn't under, I didn't know you put, like, duct tape. Or mm. not duct tape, but, like, regular tape. And it gives you that kind of flap. Like scotch tape? Yeah. Yeah. And I was yeah, like, I remember that. It looked good, though. Yeah, yeah it looked really, really bad. Good. Like, <laughs> damn, <laughs> poor girl. But yeah, the, that was cool. That's when we first started collaborating. Um, so I know you, you said you always wanted to be an actress, but like, was there something, there's a movie or something that motivated you or that you liked that was like, man, I want to. I think growing up, uh, watching movies, just going into another world always got me. Mm-hmm. I remember just watching, you know, like Robin Williams films, Angelina Jolie movies. They always just got me. Anything that was dramatic, funny, all of it. I loved it. I love going to the theater so much. I mean, I remember back in the day when you would just go see pay for one movie and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. like mom and dad just pick me, pick me up in six hours and just movie <laughs> hop and catch the end of the, or midway through. And yeah. it was fine because yeah. you would just watch a bunch of films. Yeah, this is pre uh, assigned seating. Yeah. I mean, I still do it sometimes. <laughs> I mean, I, I just honestly did it with my son, and um, he was so surprised. What, we went to go see Teenage Mutant Me- Me- Ninja Turtles, mm-hmm. and I really wanted to see Haunted Mansion. So I was like, Charlie, come on, let's go over here. He's like, what are we doing? And I was like, we're just going to go in here. Just calm down. And then when he, we went in, I was like, be quiet. Because it was already midway in, so everybody would have showed up. So we got like the last hour. The yeah. next day, he's like, that was so cool. We snuck in. It felt so cool. <laughs> he felt like a bad kid. Yeah. yeah, that was awesome. I was like, was little cool. do you know, we used to do that all day. I think the first time um, when we ever went to the movies, I think I snuck into another movie with my parents. It was our whole family, yeah. too. It was like five of us. Five, no, goodness. it was like seven of us, man. It was my parents <laughs> and like five kids. So, And uh, we watched, um, I think we paid for The Mummy or Spy Kids, and then we went to one of them. Like half and watch like the beginning and then we yeah. went to the other one. Yeah, that was a that was a times and then also drive-ins. Yeah, I remember like sneaking in my sister. We used to like put her in the back seat and just cover up with a blanket, Damn. and then be like, "Well, I think I was free at the time, so my parents would just have to pay for themselves." And then we just got in. Yeah, I don't remember going to drive-ins as a kid. It was always just, like Vegas? regular movies. Yeah. You're in Vegas? Yeah, I don't think so. Not till I was like older. Yeah. I mean, it's still the same theater. Yeah, it's the same one. It's like there's one or two. So um, after acting, uh, let's talk a little bit about like Takeout Girl. Because that was one of your your first big roles. Yeah, that was probably my, it was my biggest role because that one made it into Hulu. Mm-hmm. And I think they also put it in other streaming sites like Amazon and stuff like that. Oh, okay. And I had like lines in it. Um, actually didn't do my makeup so that was like a win (laughs) it felt so cool getting my makeup done um and then i got paid for it so that was right my biggest one like like that's the goal right Mm -hmm. there yeah that's like your first first one yeah and it was about maybe two days worth of shooting and then like a couple months later we did some pickup shots i mean it was simple it was really fun and i love that role because i transform Mm -hmm. and most of my roles i'm always transforming to something else and that's what i love to do i love those kind of roles anything that's not me i mean the chola how many cholas have you done i feel like you always do a chola i just recently did another chola in la (laughs) she was like an 80s chola so i really had to look that one up and like um research it and so i kind of uh hairspray my hair uh, a little bit up that bob what is that like scrunchie a little bit um so that was new uh, I want to say, I don't know, not that many. <laughs> I'm um, like, damn, I need to like, well, yeah, because I, I've, the film, the movies that we've done, I was like, yeah, I don't want to, I want to want you to be a chola. Like, it's so stereotypical and it's like, and I see you doing them all the time. So I try to do something different. So we did dinner for one, which was like, um, I was like, yeah, I want you for that. And, um, it was another film where like, you got beat up makeup again. <laughs> oh yeah. That was bloody. Yeah. That was some bloody makeup. That wasn't really beat up. That was... First time everything was all over. 
How was that? That was uh, now I, I understood more <laughs> with the clients I used to have. Like I have more of an understanding on what they went through before. I was like throwing the blood on them, not even caring. <laughs> and I mean, Amanda, right? That's who did the makeup. She was really putting it in there, but it came out great. Yeah. And I honestly do love how the the behind the scenes pictures look. Yeah. They're like, I mean, I look good with blood on. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, she uh, she drenched you for sure. <laughs> and I was like, well, I mean, she was an art in a car accident. Like she's got to look like she just got, you know, um, so. I mean, I didn't mind it because I love horror movies. I mean, zombie movies, zombie stuff, Walking Dead. Mm -hmm. So maybe manifest something in the future. But I want to do that kind of stuff, too. Um, so then you. um asked me to help you with breathe which i was honored to do because it was a really personal film for you i was like me all right <laughs> <laughs> uh so talk yeah. a little about breathe because that one is um you know i'm really proud of that one that it won so many like awards and mm -hmm. it got into so many festivals and it's like it's like five minutes long or less from whatever like six minutes maybe yeah tops? i think it was i think it was five minutes yeah it was like five, five minutes. and some some, some change, change yeah. yeah so talk a little bit about like your inspiration for that film Breathe was, that one was just really deep. Even, um, it was about a mom who struggles with anxiety, which I did. And when I had my first, my first child, my son, um, I just did understand motherhood. Like, it's just all too, too much. It's overwhelming. And you go through so many stages that you just feel like you're the worst mother, but then you are trying your best. And that was just what I wrote about. And I kind of think I, I use it as like as therapy. And so I know some family like the cook, my my media family had them watching it. I mean, they broke down because mm -hmm. they knew this is true. And and that's why sometimes I, I feel like that's why I haven't released it because mm -hmm. I'm like still holding on to it because it's it was a lot even when we were. Going through the filming part, you you were pushing me like it's okay, mm -hmm. but I know I have moments of like doubting myself. Mm -hmm. But um, and, and then it was nice to have my son and my daughter both in it. Yeah, and that was really cool because I love any chance to act with them. <laughs> and then I remember Rosie; that was like her first yeah. acting role, and we were just making her cry <laughs> on, on purpose. Like, we, and then Thanos. Yeah, the cinematographer, he was like, I'm going to jail. Like, <laughs> <laughs> They're calling CPS on Yeah, us. like, we're this going. Yeah. Making her cry. I but was it, like, is she crying yet? Grab her. Because <laughs> I right. think if I grabbed her or someone else grabbed her, then she was still tiny. She was, I yeah. think, maybe one or one or something. Yeah. Maybe like one I, and a half. I mean, I had wrote that script two years prior and just held on to it and didn't have, like, the the power in me to let it go. Mm -hmm. And then COVID happened. And then I, I realized time is very, very short. And I was like, oh, okay, now's the time. If I'm going to release something, you know, it, it later on, maybe be for, for my son or for my children to, to see, then I better do it now. Because the ending was very sweet in, mm -hmm. with Charlie. Yeah. Uh, and so even like the script, I feel like the script I should have, submitted it into screenwriting because the script alone i really enjoyed yeah it's so like it's so minimal but it's very like strong mm -hmm. and very like emotional so yeah i love very that emotional one. yeah yeah and it all takes place in a bathroom which is like in a bathroom in a living room it's right like, it's like two shots in the same house like, one day of shooting yeah. and that's what i'm trying to do now is think of a new film i want to make another film but i want to make it so practical too so simple and i'm just i just want to make same thing like one maybe one day of shooting mm -hmm. one location maybe one or two actors and i just can't think of anything right now <laughs> i have like writer's block and i just can't think it'll of come it. it'll yeah. come yeah. i mean yeah because breathe came mm -hmm. maybe like overnight i mean you know sometimes you just wake up and you're like yeah you just start writing you have like these thoughts you dream about it or whatever it just comes out yeah. of nowhere and you write it out in like in five minutes yeah, yeah, that was that was a fun experience. How was it for you? Well, I know you were directing yourself, but that was your first time kind of taking charge of all the whole process. I mean, that was really cool. It, being a mom kind of goes with being a producer. I always say like producer is like the mom of the set because you have to think about this. Think about they're covered. 
we have all this kind of stuff. So I had to think about crafty. Mm-hmm. And I think I overboarded with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got bought. It was just like three of us. I know, but I, I went to Costco and bought like the whole spread. I was like, if I'm going to crafty, I'm going to crafty right. This is what I want to see at craft services. And, you know, that was kind of fun. Yeah. I know hopefully one day, like, um, maybe I could do that later on too. Like, uh, bring in my husband. He's a chef and like him be craft services. Oh, yeah. That would yeah. be the goal. Yeah. Have catering and have yes. uh, have everything set. You got the two kids, actors, the mom, everything. <laughs> I'll put them to work too, because by the time that happens, they'll be old enough to be working. <laughs> yeah. So um, after we collaborated on Breathe, yeah. So you got to play uh, for fourteen days, uh, evil mom. Crazy. It was fun. Uh, I love that. I, I love seeing like those shots of you, because I was like, gosh, she's she's mean. So just talk a little bit about uh, your role in that and. Uh, you also helped me kind of like um, you actually did help me with makeup for that, too. And like you and kind of producing, yeah, kind of producing it, mm-hmm. too. Yeah. Bringing your stuff together. So mm-hmm. let's talk about that. Um, I think I manifest that one, too, because I always said I wanted to play a crazy, crazy person, you know, uh, or a crazy mom. And that one. And then plus is the horror. And it was really cool. That was just fun to me. Just another reason to transform and I just love crazy. I don't know why. <laughs> I just love it. <laughs> yeah, I was like, man, uh, I think when we, when we first started talking about it, um, that show came out with uh, um, the act or whatever, where that lady's like poisoning that, her. I know, that's we right. We talked about that. And that's then that, right. mo- that other movie came out with um, Sarah, Sarah Paulson, where she's like doing the same thing. Run. To her. I was, yeah, yes. and I was like, oh, I was like, that? those are exactly. And it was kind of in the same uh like John, not genre, but in the same like that evil mom. That thing. evil mom. Even like there's a the Amy Adams did one too. I forget Sharp Objects. Oh no! Oh, yeah, 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 the mom series. in there too yeah. was kind of. I actually read some, that book. Oh, yeah. that would be really good. <laughs> yeah, but that's just me also like being into Angelina Jolie. Like she always just played that good crazy girl interrupted. <laughs> yeah, I love girl interrupted, and I would love to be in a film like Girl Interrupted and just one of the patients. Something yeah. with an asylum. <laughs> just want to be mentally ill. An asylum, Ill. just like, please put me in there, lock me up. <laughs> cool. Um, Am right. I Catholic? And I'm Catholic too. <laughs> and then I want this kind of role. <laughs> yeah, that was a fun experience, and we got to like, it's you know, it's been like a hard. Uh, it hasn't been hard, but it's been like a lot of obstacles to get 14 days done, and I'm happy that it's finally gonna at least be shown to cast and crew soon, mm-hmm. and then hopefully it'll, it'll be out. Um, but the oh, the official trailer is out now, and you can see uh, some shots of Evil Lizette. But I want to talk about Hermanita too, because um, I've been seeing a lot of like your post of you know getting into a lot of festivals, and that was something that uh, was really cool to see. So talk a little bit about like what that film's about and like your your involvement in that. Um, Hermanita, uh, that was directed by Hassani and Hassani Mustafa. He helped me with that one. I. Put in a lot of I invested a lot in that one just to put myself out there. And it's about a it's a true based on a true story, but a based on a true story about uh, Hassani. Like and it's like what he says, it's a love letter to his sister. So oh. what happened when he was younger, he the sister came to like a group of uh, older people that he was with. I don't know if it was his cousins told them told him, hey, I, I've been I'm being sexually abused by this person. But Hassani was just too young to do something about it. So what if I if I was old enough to like do something, this is what I would have done. Mm. So that's why it, when the beginning of the film, you see based on a true story. Mm. Now, a lot of people think it's me, you know, based on my truth. But right. no, it's based on something that happened to him. Oh, wow. Yeah. Interesting. So, I mean, she was a we we just turned it around to be a female you know, character, and we wanted to hit up a, a lot of the Hispanic film festivals, so we made it more into a Latin-based kind of film. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and then it was, she's a just got a pr- released from prison, and then one night her sister, her little sister, comes over and tells her the secret. And I mean, my character has been out of jail, just trying to make better, trying to do better in life, and trying to stay out of trouble. Uh, and so with this secret, am I going to stay out of trouble or am I going to do something about it? And so that's just mm-hmm. how it concludes. And how long is that film? Uh, 12 minutes. Oh, okay, so it's pretty short. Oh, wow, that's cool. Yeah, you know, I've I've tried. Um, I've have uh, submitted to a lot of Latino festivals 
And it's hard, man. It's they're so not, hard. They're and, not. Uh, they don't think I'm Latino or something because I don't. Yeah. <laughs> no, what's funny is like we we went out for we that was our goal to hit up a bunch of film you know film festivals, and because I'm not showing us in a good light, mm. I don't think we're getting accepted. I've only been accepted into maybe one or two. I think and I got accepted to one this week actually for 14 days. But 14 oh, nice. days is not real. It's a horror. So it's like. Right. A, I don't know. But I'm like, I, I've like been released out of prison. I have the tattoos and yeah. Yeah. So, I, and I notice sometimes even reading before submitting, it says, we want to see our culture being right. seen in a good light. And I'm like, oh, well, skip, all, skip that one. It's also <laughs> like, oh, you got to be Latinx. I'm like, what the fuck is that? I don't know. We're not going to get into it, but. Like. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> another world too. And I'm like, I just want to submit my film. Yeah. And I want to network with this community, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's the reason for Hermanita why we're not hitting a bunch of those ones is because, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, I mean. But you've gotten into a lot of them. Yeah, I got into a couple uh, good good ones. Um, and how's just, it? Um, how is it going to these festivals? Like, what is your experience so people can kind of know like your experience with these festivals, the ones that you have mm-hmm. been able to attend, and what's the, the benefit? I mean, if you're gonna you know put in the time and invest in a film definitely try to go to these film festivals it it is it is the best way to network especially if it's from out of state or anywhere that's not your hometown you can network with a bunch of people that you don't know and then you can tell them hey i'm willing to travel because most of the time i do i'm like i could travel that's no problem. Let me know. It's no problem. It's no, no problem. problem. It's no problem. I'll just charge it. <laughs> charge it. <laughs> Put myself more in debt. No, I'm just kidding. But hopefully I'll pay off one day. Yeah. But, you know, you never know. You never know because who's yeah. going to reach out to you? Like, you know, that's cool. And what if, like, they're looking for something that or someone that looks like me, and but, it, you know, there's nobody else in their in their world. So, I mean, we just did um, Cordillera in Reno. Mm. And that was my first time in Reno. And mm-hmm. I was out there for three days. And that was the first time away from, like, the kids. And I really got into it. I went to all the, like, the panels, the industry panels. And I networked. And it was so cool. It was definitely worth it. It was worth, like, the submission fee for that one, you know? Because mm-hmm. it, it paid off. Yeah. And it does get pricey. <laughs> that That's <laughs> the thing. Those submissions do get pricey. Yeah. I hate the ones that you got to pay for every subject. No, that, like, those I like bypass. I'm like, no. It's so annoying. Which was Nevada, Wim- like Nevada that. Women's Festival. I really would like to give a shout out to them. Mm-hmm. They're amazing. They had the one fee, you know, and their fee is not outrageous. And you got, you know, either you get in or not. Yeah, it's one. I think it's one of the biggest like women's um, Nevada. So that's damn, cool. damn short film festival. Also, the one that we have here. Mm-hmm. Another shout out yeah, that's because one of the big ones too. they um one fee. It's not like you're submitting for best actor or whatever. <laughs> you know, best <laughs> film. Every single category. No, they're yeah, just so one fee, and whether you get in or not, and they treat you very well. So I remember. Um, I don't know if it was like a couple weeks ago. I was watching. I work. I work at a TV station. And I was like, oh, look, that's Lizette in a commercial. <laughs> Dollar loan center. So I see that you're doing a lot of commercials. And then there was another one with like a Spanish uh, yeah. artist. Mm-hmm. So uh, how is like your dive into commercials? That would be this is the biggest year I've had with commercials. I feel like I mean, it's been two commercials, but the was first, only those two. I thought you did a, a few more. Well, the, for this year. Oh, okay. yeah. I mean, the Dollar Loan Center commercial um, that was about july so it just kind of really, you're the first one that told me about it because i'm like i've been looking for it <laughs> i want to see it i want to know <laughs> if i made the cut <laughs> like that's the biggest thing when you do background you're like did i make the cut yeah and, and uh, i you, did you were there a few and times I was, and i was like yes i made it yeah and also um the last one i did was for the american music awards and it was for it was for a Latin artist. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't really know him. His name was Lenny Tavares, mm-hmm. and he was really cool on set. And it was a Toyota commercial. That was like something big too. But that commercial only got to play one time At during the, the during the oh. awards. Okay. So I was like, I recorded it, and I was able to you know post it online. Um, and then I I had like. I had the biggest role kind of because it was background people and then it was like barista. Mm. So I got the barista role, which was like more like on screen time with featured the extra. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's what it is. Feature feature yeah. extra. And I was like, Yes. And then I, I noticed when I did the audition they wanted me to do it in Spanish and I'm like, Okay. Um and I did it. 
And when I went on sale, I was like, now I know why I got this feature extra. Because nobody else is speaking Spanish uh, on there. I was well, like, that's I'm good. the, I'm the there only you go. one. Bilingual. Yeah, and it was really Helps cool. Out. It was my first time um, working with Spanish directors because I was talking to them in Spanish. Oh, and really? they really appreciate it. Also, they came from, like, out of the country? Yeah, I mean, they, they're... Their Spanish was way better than mine. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cool. Um, so what is the process for you, like, jumping into these commercials? How are you getting them, and what is the process? Um, most of the time, the Toyota one I saw on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And I just, you know, put in my, my stuff and hope, hope for the best. The other one, um, the other one, I think it was on Facebook, too. And are you sending self tapes or what do you I mean, ones? you just put in whatever they ask for, mm -hmm. and then if they want to see more, the, you know, you send them in. But I am kind of building up a commercial little reel, yeah, you good. know, little by little. I mean, back in twenty twenty one, I believe that was my first commercial was for the va the vaccine mm. to get vaccinated. <laughs> I remember, did you, did you ever see that one? <laughs> I didn't see it, no. Yeah, I did that, that one, and that was really funny oh. um, because I wasn't vaccinated at the time, and then the director <laughs> was like, well, what would you tell people? And I'm like, um, like, <laughs> you just wing it. Yeah. So it came out good, and I did it in Spanish and English. Okay. So And then my mom reviews it. She's like, you did good. You know? Yeah, no, I think your Spanish <laughs> was good, and I told you that because I, in 14 days, you had Spanish scenes, and that scene that where you uh, where you walk into the door and you guys are arguing that was like yeah. it was just like my parents like it's just like what, what I deal with my parents. I just always <laughs> doubt myself with my Spanish. No. Um, I mean, I speak it with my kids as much as I can so they can learn, but I do go over it with my mom. I feel like she's my <laughs> oh yeah, well they're native like yeah. speakers though. Yeah. She even like goes over the script with me and I'm like, I, you know, I I practice with her too. She's like, and sometimes the last film I just did it was another short film. And you could tell the directors just looked it up on Google Translate. She's like, where, where is this? Where are they coming with this? No, just say this. And then, <laughs> then I mean, they didn't know, you know, so yeah. we did change up the script a little bit. She's like, they wouldn't say this. They wouldn't say that. So it's always nice to have help from my family. And I do I do need to stop doubting myself and just. Yeah. No, yeah, your Spanish is it's good enough to be on film. <laughs> well, and then I, I mean, I'm cussing in Spanish. <laughs> That's the easy one. Well, yeah, those are easy. <laughs> um, so, are you like Are you constantly auditioning, or what is uh, what is like, what are you going through right now, like in your journey? Mm, I mean, I'm submitting myself and just hoping for something, uh, but I don't know if it's because of the strike. I don't know if you know, just jobs yeah. are not happening like right, right now. Right now, now yeah. Mm -hmm. But are you? Uh, so, are you like signed up for a certain place where you can find auditions, or how are you finding roles? No, I mean, uh, I mean, I do pay one of those websites that is like a casting website mm -hmm. and I look at, I get emails from them and I just look to see if I fit anything or if I want to, you know, submit myself to them. And I just, and when I see something I like, I do submit. Mm -hmm. Most of those are in LA. Um, and I, I do see some non-union, which I'm still am. I am still trying to find like an agent and a manager. So hopefully that'll be in the future. I don't know if that helps, but uh, so what? What's next for you? What are you working on now? And any uh, projects? Let's see. Now I'm just trying to think of something to write for my next film. That'll be hopefully the goal. Is I do want to make a film by. Well, I mean, we're all already getting to the new year, so hopefully by the end of the next year, I have a new film. So what that, genre? You don't know anything. I yet? don't know. Yeah, I mean, I'm in writer's block right now, but I want it to be a short film. Yeah. And I just hope that I can get into some of the film festivals I already went to, mm -hmm. like Nevada Women's or Damn Short, because they were just Cordillera. Would love to like be in those uh, around that kind of environment again. It was just so much fun. Do you want to write and direct, or you just want to act? Uh, I think uh, I want. Well, obviously, you're gonna write it because yeah, I'll probably write it and be in it as well. Um. Direct, I would, would be open mind, open to whoever um, I, I pitch it to. So, I mean, that would be kind of hard to direct and act because I do want to be, I just want to do the acting. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, anything you want to say before we wrap it up? Um, I mean, you can follow my acting page, my business page at Lizette Double underscore Hunter on Instagram. So please follow. Follow I'll her. Follow back. <laughs> you can watch Dinner for One and Hermanita. Is that out yet or no? No, Hermanita, we're still going through the film festivals. Okay. Uh, you can watch Dinner for One. Um, it's on 
film goals. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. See you guys next time. Bye. Bye.